Okay, so uh, I've seen uh, some tutorials that go over ducking in a Godot. Not too many, even in like something like 2D. But I have not seen any for uh, 3D, especially with first-person uh, character controllers. So in a first-person game, you don't necessarily need a model, so you don't need to worry about state machines. Otherwise, if you're doing like a third-person game or something, it might be better to look at like a 2D tutorial by someone like Game Endeavor. He did like a little t uh, tutorial on ducking. But in this one, I'll just do a little first-person one where you have no uh, model. And instead, you're just like... Uh, just walking in uh, a game. But yeah, here's like a finished one. I'll make like a one from scratch in the video, but right now here's like a little finished product type of thing. So uh, when you're in an open space, you wanna be able to duck and then stand up once you let go of like uh, whatever your duck button is. For me, it's control. But yeah, see, look, I'm, I'm ducking and then I'm standing. So you can see in the top left corner, it'll say is poop when I'm standing and is ducking when I am ducking. So, uh, yeah, so as you can see, as soon as I let go of control, I stand up since this is an open space. But once I get under here, this is not an open space, my character will not stand up. See, it's still ducking. And it's still in duck mode, basically. And when I get out, boom, I'm standing again. But yeah, just that little message in the top left corner is just for debugging, and that's about it. Okay, so I got the character controller set up, and I'm just going to show it off real quick just to see how it works. And I'll just go straight to the map. So basically I can move around, look around with the camera, move around with the WASD keys, and if I hold the duck button or control, then I'll move slower. Okay, so uh, let's get out of this and yeah, let's just look at the code. So basically just some normal stuff and uh, the most important stuff that we'll be looking at though is uh, basically uh, after you let go of the duck button, it'll, the ducking will be reset. We reset it first well, uh, when we first get into the physics process. You can put this into like an input function, but for now, for this video, I'm just gonna put it straight in the physics process function. And uh, yeah, we got our is ducking variable up here. And uh, if we press the duck button, then uh, is ducking will be set to true. So um, right now I have uh, these two collision shapes. So one will be the ducking collision shape, which I'm showing right now. And at first it starts off as disabled. And this one will be our normal collision shape, where, which will be like uh, activated when we're not pressing the duck button. So I'll just like switch between these two uh, states basically. And uh, yeah, right here I'll explain the mesh instance later. Uh, that's not that important right now, but yeah. So as of now, all it's doing is it's slowing down. So we'll also want to like move the camera a little bit. So as you can see, the camera set to 0 0.533, and uh, that's where the translation is. And uh, yeah, so I want to capture that when we first start off. So I'll get the spatial height, basically, and um, and once we enter the ready function, then we'll get the spatial height and set it equal to transform dot origin dot y. So that this is just getting one axis of the transform of that spatial. And that's just the y-axis because that's all we really care about. So when we get to the ducking part, we want to uh, set that to um, half of its original height. Or it could be whatever you want. Like uh, three. if you divide by 3.0, you'll get a third of the original height. If you divide by 4, you'll get a fourth. Whatever. You could have it what, however you want. I'm using 2.0 for this video. You could use whatever you want. Okay, so let's see how that works. Um, yeah. And as you like could notice, it's not getting reset. Uh, yeah, see, like once you press uh, duck, it won't get reset. But this is a good way to check if uh, it looks right. So it looks like I could fit into this. So this is uh, the um, ducking height that we want. So Okay, so let's get out of this. Okay, so right now I need to uh, reset the camera height when we're not ducking. So basically an easy way to check this, since uh, spatial height gets the original um, transform.origin.y, we can set that. So uh, upon entering the physics function, first thing we could check, I don't need those parentheses, we could check if the the transform.origin.y is uh, not equal to um, spatial height, then uh, we're gonna like set is duck into false, and then we'll reset the um, global transform.origin to spatial height. So boom, now we've already uh, got the camera done pretty much. I'll show you the results. So it resets itself when you let go of control, and yeah, and it looks like we're ducking, but right now we do not have the collision shape set up. So right here, this is where the collision shapes come in handy. So this one's activated, this one's deactivated, just as a refresher. So in here, of course, we're gonna like uh, switch the two. So basically we're gonna set the walking collision shape 
to disabled. But to do that, you just set it just dot disabled equals to true, and then uh, you uh, you get the um, what's it called the ducking shape dot disabled equals to false. So this will set the ducking shape to be enabled for now, and uh, it'll set the other walking shape to be disabled. We don't want both of them activated at the same time. So yeah, and up here we're gonna reset it. So it'll be false and true you just switch them out again. So this will be back to the default settings. So basically all that, that's what this part's doing. It's just resetting to the default settings if we're not at the default settings based on where the camera location is. So yeah, so right here, let's go back into it. So right now, it's still working. So now we can go through here. So we know that the collision shapes are actually changing, but there's a problem. If we, uh, so like, we, it's all fine if we stand up over here, but if we go under here, then we got some issues. We cannot get out once we get in. We'll have to duck again to get out. But this is really glitchy and this could lead to some worse problems than this, definitely. So what we wanna do uh, when we're about to stand up, and this is only when we're about to stand up, we don't need to worry about it in this part because this is the minimum height that we'll be at. This is gonna be the maximum height that we'll be at, basically. Unless we're like jumping or something, but yeah. So, what we want to do in here is we want to shoot a ray cast upwards. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to uh, be able to check the distance between the player and the ceiling that we're uh, under. So, over here, I have like, I made like a little function. So, right here, we're going to get the player's global position and then shoot a ray from that to a vector that we passed in called VEC. And then we'll uh, exclude the player's own colliders so that the ray does not collide into them. We don't want that. So um, up here, well, I'm going to use that function. So I'll just call it result equals to ray shot. So we'll pass in a vector that's like pointed upwards. So it'll have a positive y value and zero on the x and z axis. And you want a large number so that you don't run into glitches like I have. So first off, right when you come in, you could kind of already kind of guess that if it doesn't hit anything, that means we could definitely stand. So we want to check that first. So basically, if uh, not, re I mean not not result. So if uh, result dot empty because it's a dictionary. That's what ray. That's what this ray shot uh, returns. So if it's empty, we good. We good. Yeah, we could stand up. But the only problem is if you uh, that's that only works in like open areas without ceilings. So if the ray the ray shot doesn't hit anything. We're, like we're, we're good in those areas but if it does hit something that means right now we cannot get out of the ducking mode but we want to be able to get out of the ducking mode if we're in a tall enough area so this is where we'll check the distance so we want first we want to check if it's not empty so that we don't uh, cause a crash and uh, let me see and then um, we'll do like a little and check and uh, yeah so uh, after this we'll uh, check the position we'll get the position so once you call position, it's kind of confusing, it will get the actual global transform dot origin of this ray shot. So basically where it hits. So then you subtract that from your global transform dot origin. So after we uh, subtract these two things, we only care about the Y value because we're just worried about the height of the player. And after this, we need to somehow find how tall the player is so that we can say when they're able to stand uh, coming from a duck position. So I made a little mesh instance that's just as tall as the, um, the collision shape of when we're standing. And that was uh, that just happened to be 5.75. So we want it to be greater than that value if we're able to, to stand again, if we want to reset everything. But um, that that I don't like to set just the static value. That that's, that's why I made this little mesh instance. So basically what, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna um, find the uh, var player height. I'm gonna get that, and then I'm gonna set player height to that uh, mesh instance. So you get the mesh of that mesh instance, and then you get the AABB, and then you get the size, and then you get the Y value. So that will be the player box height. So I'll be the height of that box. And uh, after that, I'm just gonna queue free that mesh instance because we're not gonna use it in our game. And uh, yeah, so right here, now we have the height and we just got rid of the mesh instance. And yeah, that's all we really needed from this thing. And it's just like a nice graphical way to give yourself that. And it won't slow it down too much when you start it off. It'll just get rid of it. But yeah, so uh, now that we got that, we can just say player height and boom. 
now we got that player height and uh so uh yeah so if we're out in an open area we'll be able to stand and if we're um if the ceiling is like way greater is greater than the um player's height we can stand okay so let's see this let's see how this works it should work and uh yeah so right here boom oh yeah it works and when we get out yep it works yep yep so yeah so there's a slight chance that we might be a little bit taller but uh you could just like mess with the value a little bit but we got the general the general like thing of what we want but yeah so we we don't want to be able to stand up in this crawling space but we want to be able to stand up outside of it so that was the whole point of that race shot so it is working and yeah so that's pretty much how you uh, get some basic ducking done in Godot and that you don't have it get become all glitched out and shit. Okay, so I hope you all have a great day and I hope this helped.